Yeah, thanks. So, good afternoon, guys. <laughs> so, I'm going to present about Java W7 WebSocket API. So, before going into the topic, let me just uh, tell who I am. Uh, my name is Richaran. I work in Software AG. I'm a JAG member for uh, the past year. And I've contributed to a few open source projects and done few Android projects. So that's it about me. So before going into WebSocket API, let me just give you a small intro about WebSockets, how things work, why WebSockets came into the picture. And then I will explain why, the, why there was a need for an API for WebSockets in Java W7. OK. So as I told, this is what I would be covering. And I will show you a quick demo of uh, the power of WebSockets. So WebSockets by nature is TCP based and it's full duplex. So meaning that it can communicate in both ways. So if a client and server communicates, so it can send messages at the same time. In HTTP, that's not possible. You could either send a request or it receives a response. So that was a major flaw in HTTP. And this was originally part of HTML5. So people got started uh, working with WebSockets in HTML5 and saw the power of it and wanted it in Java. So there were many implementations of WebSockets in Java. I will just show you a slide. After a few slides, it will come. And there is also a W3C API for this. So as I told, it's full duplex, meaning that you could uh, send messages in both directions. So here half duplex is HTTP. So you could either send a response, sorry, send a request or receive a response. So this is full duplex and this is what WebSockets do. So before WebSockets, it was pretty nasty out there. So polling, long polling was methodologies that were m mostly used. In case of polling, what it will do is it will send a request and get the response. But the client is programmed to send a request again after a fixed period of time, meaning that the client knows when the data is available in the server. So that is how polling used to work. But in case of live uh, uh, share market information that needs to be uh, uh, pulled up, so that was not possible because the data would be changing dynamically and you don't know when there would be an update. So there, that was a major flaw with polling. So long polling is a slight update to polling, but it's much more worse. So it's like you open up a connection, send a request, and the connection is there for a fixed period of time. If the data is not available, it would send a response uh, stating that it's time out and there is a problem. If the data is available, send it back. So if there are multiple requests, more than 100 requests are going in, or take instance for 10 requests, 10 connections would be opened up and 10 would be sitting in idly. So that is a waste of uh, sockets. And uh, this was avoided in web sockets completely. So Comet and Ajax used both of these techniques to uh, simulate a rich client user interface. So it, what Comet does is it actually assigns a callback function in using polling or long polling. So when the data comes in, it would appear that the function, it would appear that it has come dynamically. So it's like a callback handler. When the data comes in, it works. If the data doesn't come, it doesn't work. So it simulates that the data is dynamically coming, but in turn, it's waiting for the data and it's not dynamically done. So and the HTTP method of sending request and response is much, much more bulkier. So HTTP adds lots of header information in it. So each time I send a request and a response, there are a lot of unnecessary data being sent and received. It makes my uh, header information very much uh, heavy. So in case of I'm sending a simple hello world message, it takes up to 200 bytes. So it's, in case of WebSockets, it takes only 20 bytes. So there is a lot of unnecessary information being sent every time I send a request and I get back a response which is inefficient. In case of I make a thousand requests, just multiply the numbers and you would get the picture. It's considerably reduced in WebSockets. This is a normal HTTP request. Uh, the client requests some information, it sends a request to the server, it gets the response back from the server. This happens normally. In case of polling, it sends a request. If there is no information, it gets a timeout error. 
So that happens again and again till the data is being fetched from the server. So as I told in long polling, that thing is being avoided. So the connection is there for a few minutes and making it, uh, making the connection persist for a few minutes. And so there would be a lot of unnecessary po uh, uh, sockets opened up for connections. But in case of web sockets, only a single connection is opened up. Since it's full duplex in nature, and it's bi-directional by the way, it's full <coughs> duplex, you could send and receive messages at the same time. And bi-directional, meaning that both the uh, client as well as the server would be able to send and receive the messages simultaneously and not, resting, not restricting the client or the server to only send or receive messages. <coughs> so for establishing a WebSocket connection, it will send a handshake request at the starting. The handshake request will contain the information of it's, that it's upgrading to a WebSocket. So this WebSocket occurs on top of HTTP at the starting for the first time. Then it upgrades to a WebSocket. If the server supports WebSocket, it will send a handshake response. So in the, in the header, in the handshake request, you could see there is an upgrade here. So there is, a, as you could see, upgrade to WebSocket. So and the connection is also an upgrade. It's not a normal request. It's an upgrade request to the server that's being sent. And the server, if it's understand, if it understands what WebSocket is, it will send back a response stating that it's accepting WebSockets and the client could furtherly communicate through WebSocket API rather than HTTP one. And WebSocket uses a WS instead of a HTTP uh, for every time it sends and receives the messages. So after the handshake re re request and the response, it's connected totally. And the uh, client can send and receive information dynamically here. The main advantage is the unnecessary HTTP header that was sent in HTT HTTP is being avoided totally in WebSockets, meaning that it reduces a lot of information. Redundant data is being reduced. So this is the support that is being currently provided by uh, all the browsers in WebSockets. As you could see, almost all browsers are supported. So there is a site called Can I Use WebSockets? If you go there, this chart would be available. Only the native Android browser is not currently supported. Other than that, everything is supported. So if you are a developer, you want to develop in WebSockets, you could straight away jump in. So there won't be any problems. As I told you, there was a need for why WebSocket API was implemented because there were lots of APIs being uh, developed for each specific use cases. So Apache Tomcat was specifically done for Apache. And in case of GlashWiz, so it had its own implementation. So it's unnecessary that developers need to go through every implementation and they need to understand. So for this purpose, they had produced a Java API WebSocket. So what Java API helps us to do is it it would it can be either done through an interface method or an uh, annotation. So I'm going to deal with uh, interface methods. Oh no, sorry, annotation methods. Annotations are much cleaner than interface, and interface is just a bit messy here. So let me show you a small example. So here I'm just annot annotating the method with at server endpoint. So it makes it clean makes the class now becomes a WebSocket endpoint. And whenever I hit the resource, whenever I hit the URL with a slash hello, this endpoint gets called. And the corresponding method will deal with the messages. So that is how things work here. So these are all the other annotations that are being currently supported. The at server endpoint, as I told you, will make a POJO look like a server endpoint. And it's a class level annotation. In case of client endpoint, it needs to be annotated with that client endpoint. And the beauty of WebSockets is there is a concept of server and a client, and there is a concept of peer-to-peer. -peer. In case, there would be a central hub, and it would be sending the information to rest of the peers. So it's like I make a change in one peer, it would get reflected in all the other peers. That is something uh, which was done beautifully in WebSockets, and I will show you a demo on how it is done. At open uh, annotation will uh, make the message deal with a uh, um, open whenever, whenever a connection gets opened, so the corresponding method which is annotated with that open will deal with all the stuff and it will tell you what what it does. So 
likewise that close on close annotation will also deal with the close uh, uh, instance so whenever you you can also send params through this so when you send params and uh, at path param will be called so it will deal with the params and however you want to manipulate your params it can be done in the message so likewise you just need to annotate every message every method with the corresponding annotation and it will look much cleaner than what it can be done through an interface method so interface it's a little bit uh, it can give you the power to manipulate stuff but it's not cleaner this looks very much cleaner in comparison uh, to the interface methods so i will just show you a demo So this class is my server endpoint class. I have annotated it with the method so at server endpoint, and I've given the URI here. So at slash websocket is the URI that is going to be it each and every time I send a request. And the class, as you can see, I told you whenever whenever I annotate a method with at open, it will deal with the open connections. So whenever a connection is being opened, the method on open will be called, and correspondingly it will take care of all the events. So likewise for the on close. And in case of message sending, that on message uh, can be uh, an annotation will be used for the method level. And one more thing, there is a small drawback in this. You can only use three at on messages for a single class. So that's a small drawback. Here. Let me show you a demo. So this is a collaborative whiteboard. So whatever you do in one by whiteboard will get reflected in the another one. So I'm actually firing up three browsers. One is a Chrome and another one is a Safari. Let me just open up Firefox. <laughs> so as you can see, now I'm just hitting in one browser. The data gets propagated in all the three browsers. So that is the power of web sockets. In case the architecture here, it's like peer to peer. Everything is a peer. In if a data gets changed in one peer, it it gets reflected in all the other peers correspondingly. So that that is getting dealed in at on message annotation. Wendy. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. So now are you able to see it? So that is the power which is being done here. It, it doesn't follow a typical client server architecture. It follows a peer to peer architecture. There is a one common at server endpoint and it will reflect all the data that is being done in one peer to all the others. Now let me just show you what, what is happening in the wire. Oh yeah, okay. So this is what is happening. The corresponding coordinates and the color get sent each and every time. So as you could see, it is stating that the message is received and not sent or something else. This is the data that is being received. If I do a change in one 
browser it gets reflected in another. So let me just show you something. So this is a Chrome application that will help you send uh, request to web sockets. So it's showing disconnected. And in case of the normal uh, thing, there is any, there is no disconnected or something. This is the way you send HTTP requests. So it's like you press send, the information is sent, that's all. But in case of a socket, you could see it's showing disconnected. If I just press connect, connect, it will get connected, meaning that every time you, you open a socket, it will uh, open up a connection and keep it open for some time. So I'm just changing the color so that it, so that you could see the difference. So the request has been sent and you could see that a black box has been generated on top of a red box where the data red color was used to be. So this is the change here. Yeah, okay. So see, you could see the change. It's been propagated in all the two browsers. And it's like peer-to-peer, peer as I said. Let me just explain the code a little bit so that you would be able to understand things. So what happens here is JSON data is being sent every time I'm clicking a <coughs> send, a requ send button. So, so data which is being sent from the peer gets uh, come to the web socket endpoint and it's being decoded so it cannot handle raw data web sockets can only deal with binary or strings and here the json will come as a string and the figure it uses encoders and decoders to convert it to pojos and play with it so in case of here there is no need of a pojo but still if you go for complex architectures you need a pojo oh, so this is a decoder that will decode the JSON information to a POJO and the POJO will be again sent back as a response. It will be again encoded as a JSON and will, send, will be sent back as a response. And as you could see in the figure decoder, it implements a class called figure. So this figure contains information about how to deal with JSON. So whenever a some event happens in a peer, the data gets come sent here and it will get saved as a JSON as say, JSON here in the POJO. And the POJO gets played with and it will be sent as a response. So that is what is happening inside this application. So that's it from me. Any questions? <coughs> Yeah, That's but like actual yeah, it's it's like a central hub. So right, that, that's like broadcasting. yeah, broadcasting the information, but still it's like a central hub. And in case of a client and a server, that that in normal scenarios, a single client will respond to a server, and there is a central hub, and it will deal with all the other uh, peers here. So everything everything is getting converted to a peer rather than a client. It's not a client. Uh -huh. It's it's a peer. So it's like, like actual yeah. Yeah, somewhat, yeah, yeah, yeah. So somewhat like that. So is there a default support for WebRTC in Java? No, there isn't a support. Yeah, but WebRTC is just like a client. Yeah, WebRTC, it was first just authenticate with the server. And once the communication is established, both the browsers will communicate, yeah, communicate without the interference of the server. So 
I guess that is being achieved like this, but web WebRTC in sense is not, yeah. Maybe in future? Yeah, maybe. If you want, you could start up a spec and uh, <laughs> if you, Yeah, it's stateless. So the primary idea is to not to keep a connection yeah. uh, open, yeah. uh, like endlessly. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But if it's going to be done in web sockets, yeah. uh, but what will be the strain on the server resources? Yeah. And how long it will be in holding that connection? So it's like uh, there is uh, some uh, uh, bad sides to it. It's like a server, it's a, a, an endpoint gets opened up and the connection will stay. If you open, uh, fire up 10 connections, 10 connections will be opened up. So that is, I have so not so played with it. Like a database connection, yeah, it yeah, to yeah, it will. So in case of some errors happen, it will close the connection. Okay. So, but there is no uh, uh, kind of a specification and it says it will be open up for so much time. Yeah, I think we can configure that. Configure that, yeah. okay. Because typically, when you work with some, for example, yeah, yeah. HTML5 kind of a Correct. application where there are so many clients yeah. coming up, so this may easily lead into a very bad yeah. thing. Like people get started with start using. So it's a it, it's a protocol API. You need you only need to be figuring out all that stuff, I guess. There are some discussions that the security flaw, so the hacking and other stuff. But still, it's improving. Which means it might be a very good. Uh, for games. Internet. Yeah. Game yeah, game development will be. Yeah, first time it will send the header. Then afterwards, there won't be any headers. Only the message will be sent on the wire. So, meaning that the day, an amount of data sent is being reduced considerably. So I said for a single hello world message there would be 200 bytes of data being sent. In case of web sockets 20 bytes of data is being sent. That is excluding the starting point where in the starting point the header information is sent. Afterwards it is not the being sent. Will be same because assume that in many applications you know personalization using the header data. For example this kind of location it said you may be using the header IP address they show the ads or location water things. So those kind of scenarios what you, I think you might be need, you need to send the data with the client, so, yeah. I believe the first time you actually, you know, establish a handshake or something, so that data is sent over there, and because the server maintains a connection, you don't need to identify yourself again and again. So it's like, again, a TV connection, you just give a user ID and password. Initially, so the make server a connection. should be holding it up. Yes. So once, uh, if the connection terminates, I think you need to identify yourself again. So that there may be uh, that scenario where you need to send that information. So any more questions? How did you make the handshake connection? What? Where is the handshake connection? You will uh, make the connection with JavaScript or with Java? It happens, it's a it's a part of the protocol. So web sockets typically will send the handshake so request. You mentioned that uh, the URL in Java is right where you, you, you have to call the URL yeah. first time. Yeah, first time. Where from you call that? From the client, from the, the peers. In, so the let me just show you that. There is a JavaScript API for the website. So a JavaScript you. API for that. It's like, it's a JavaScript. Okay. There is a API available in JavaScript. Just yeah, there the are some one callback methods. Maybe you can open the HTML file. So here it will make the request. Yeah, that. Yeah. So that is where it makes the request. Yeah. So, any more questions? No, I have not tried it. Okay. Okay. So, thank you, guys.